Hi everyone, Lydia Lee here. I'm the founder of Screw the Cubicle and the creator of the 90 Day Launch Academy and the Tiny Business Revolution Mentorship Program. I am really excited to introduce you to Rebecca Collins, who I have uh, worked with for many years and have actually completed both of these programs with me. And I've had the utmost pleasure working with her from this beginning conception of her business idea to getting her first clients and then seeing her grow her business to a full-time gig. So one of my favorite things to do is to showcase the wonderful work of my coaching clients. And I do this through these case study interviews that you're watching today that really allow you to see what really happens behind the scenes of a business building journey. So I've invited Rebecca to chat with me today about her journey to build her business while working full time and what she's learned along the way about creating a purposeful and profitable business she's proud of. I'm really excited to speak to you today, Becca. Me too. I feel like it's been a long time coming and I'm really excited that we're finally doing this. I know it's been such a journey and I was like really trying to think about like, how do we kind of go through all these wonderful milestones you've had, which has been quite a bit because we've mm. worked together from, as I mentioned, right, these different stages of your business. So I kind of want to break it down for people because I think in different stages of like this inaugural fuzzy feeling of like, am I even meant to be a business owner? Like, why does things feel hard? What am I even supposed to do? Right. That stage has a different level <laughs> of yeah. like confusion. And then when you even have that business up and running, what are sort of the key things that propel you to move forward with that business? So I'm glad I, I've been a part of your journey on kind of both stages of the business building journey. So I can't wait to kind of talk about it. Um, but first, for people watching, just so that they get a context of like who you are and what you do, um, just tell us a bit about your business, like who you help, what you help with and why you're passionate about it. Yeah, sure. Um, so I run a brand coaching business called the Conscious Communication School, and I specialize in working with um, other coaches, mostly women-led businesses who are struggling with their content and their copy. They're maybe struggling to actually like figure out what their brand is. So I work with them. I often come at it from a more of a, like a story first approach um we focus on brand storytelling quite a lot and that's kind of how we put that brand strategy together so that you're really clear on who you are what's your unique value and what what makes you stand out from other people within your niche so that you're really confident when you actually do start your marketing you know how to yeah talk about yourself and do it in a way that really feels like you and and uh comes through with ease I love that and also I know that like coming into this business concept wasn't like an overnight thing right like yeah. there was a moment you came to me in the beginning like before we even start working together and you had been in a particular industry for quite a long time and you kind of felt like maybe you stick there right but then mm. it was sort of this journey of figuring out how can you reinvent what you know how to do and if you were to leave the industry who could you help right with your skill sets um, that you have existing without having to upskill or go back to school for a new skill yeah, right? and kind of really almost like honor your resume, honor like your professional experience, honor even your personal experience, right? To be able to come up with that idea. Um, and I kind of want to talk a little bit about kind of pre 90 day launch, you know, journey because the 90 day launch obviously is my program is that starter that first mm. starter stage, right? Of like, I have no idea what to start as a business. I have no idea how to repurpose my skills. Um, where, like, if you were to go back down memory lane and kind of go yeah. back to that feeling of lostness and confusion in that beginning stage of your business, like, what do you think were the things you felt really stuck in? And what did you need support on during that moment? Oh my gosh, so much. And I, I didn't even mention that I was a TV producer, like in a former life before all of this, which was kind of, I was like, do I mention it now? Do I, do I, is it like a spoiler? Uh, but I, before I figured out I wanted to like work in, in branding and with storytelling, I was a producer, I'm a trained journalist. And the biggest thing, my biggest thing was, okay, I know I want to go on my own. I would, I know I want to be, I have my own business and be self-employed, but I had no, I really had no idea where to start. I was just like, I want this, but I, I didn't even know what business I wanted to start that. And that was a, a big thing that I had to, I worked with you to figure out kind of what angle do I take all of these skills in terms of like, Credit crafting a story together, research, pitching stories, helping people with their messaging was is a massive part of what I used to do and kind of encompassing all of that and figuring out, okay, how can 
I guess the whole thing around journalism is how can you communicate the thing that you're meant to be communicating? What's the message? What's the purpose behind this content that you're trying to put out in various different forms, whether that was TV or online content or videos and online production, which I used to do. Um, now it seems really obvious that, of course, it kind of branding and messaging, it seems in hindsight. But at the time I was like, is it PR? Which at one right. point I was wondering, is it PR? Is it do I am I a straight copywriter and do I just write for other people but that didn't feel quite right because I love I love speaking with people and coaching with them in that capacity too and I wanted to bring that into the work but this was a whole journey and it it, it yeah it took working with somebody else like yourself to figure out what what that was uh but very much when I was first thinking about it I had no idea it wasn't like um, I have friends, for instance, that make candles and they made candles in their spare time. And then they thought, great, maybe I can turn this into a business. I didn't have that. It was a little, little bit more intangible to figure out what that was. And that's where you came in really and helped me process that and mm. figure out what those skills were. Yeah, I think that's so important to talk about because there is this myth that people have around like, I don't get started on doing anything for a business until I'm perfectly crystal clear on my business idea, <laughs> right? Like it was like meant to like one day hit you over the head that this is the thing that you're meant mm -hmm. to be doing. And I think in your journey, one of the things is like, just, first of all, being brave enough to say, I don't know the outcome yet of what business this looks like. But what I do know is that I am motivated, right? Because I know one of the things that was a big motivating factor for you is that you wanted this autonomy over your time, right? Having time freedom, you know, we have a big love together of Portugal, right? You want to mm -hmm. live in Portugal. You want to be able to be close to London where your family is, right? And your friends are, but have that flexibility uh, to, to not only do that on your vacation days, but to be able to live and work kind of anywhere that you choose to do, right? Um, I kind of want to talk about that like emotional world you were going through of like, how did you manage to trust that journey of like, I will discover the pieces as I go instead of waiting for perfection, right? For a business to get started. Like what were some of the things you had to grapple with and kind of shift in your mindset to feel like I can take imperfect action, you know, to yeah. discover the right business for me versus just standing there and waiting for that business to hit me over the head. Yeah, totally. I think that's everything. I think without taking that imperfect action, you never get that clarity. So you ha I had to get okay with the not knowing. It's more, there's going to be a feeling of discomfort for a while. And just when you, when you accept that and just go, okay, it's going to be a bit uncomfortable then you when the discomfort came up it wasn't really an issue as much because it's like oh, okay that's the thing it's meant to feel a bit uncomfortable while I figure it out and just trust that by taking that imperfect action the answers will eventually come and then I think after I got a few of those mini light bulb moments Lydia you start to trust the process you trust you trust the process of not knowing because you know bit by bit the knowing will will come to you so I think it was just that and that for me in practical terms it meant because, I mean, if you've got any understanding of the corporate media world, it, the hours are crazy. The pressure is wild. It's it's not the most easy environment, to say the least, to try and start a small business in, which I learned pretty quickly. And I knew going into it, but I, I was like, OK, this is what I want to do. I'm just going to have to commit for a while. Um, and I'd often like voice message you, you on Voxer or something like, OK, I'm going to try and do as much as I can, but I think I need a break this weekend or whatever. But when I did have the time and I was scheduled, it would mean waking up maybe an hour earlier and doing an hour before work started because I knew that the, when the TV job started, it would just take me. So it would be, let's do some time in the morning or I've got a weekend. Can I put some time aside on a Saturday? Which was yes. And I, if I hadn't done that, honestly, I wouldn't have got to where I am today to have that confidence. Um, so, but through that, taking those steps, that's where the clarity comes from. Even if it was just half an hour or, I don't know, reading a blog post or just trying something out or scribbling in my journal, which I did a lot. I did a lot of journaling, which helped with that clarity um, so that I could kind of figure out what direction I wanted to repurpose my skills. Yeah, and, and I love that you talked about like, it wasn't a lot of time right away, right? Because life is unpredictable, right? Work can be unpredictable. Um, and I think when people put, 
a deadline. You know, you and I talked a lot about this of like the minute you start to go, I have to launch by this date or I have to have these things done. And sure, deadlines do help with, you know, giving us the motivation to complete particular tasks. But sometimes in a journey of like discovery, right, of like what I want to do, which is a big question. And especially if you want to do something purposeful, it can't be it's, it's not a process to be rushed. Right. Good work, meaningful work takes time and giving ourselves that space and time to test things, right, to evaluate our ideas, to put a little mini project out there and see what happens is part of the process and that journey. And the more and the, the commitment, as you say, right, the consistency to commit to it, even an hour a week to start, right? Like that is a much better practice and ritual to have versus giving yourself these like large indigestible goals, right? That is that pressure while having a full-time job. And, and that doesn't help in, I think, the motivating energy. We even need to do hard things because we don't give ourselves that space to do it that way, right? Um, and you had a lot of, I think, from what I remember going through that beginning journey, for you is how you, you know, because your idea has evolved, right? Since the beginning mm. of thinking about this, is it storytelling? Is it messaging? Is it copywriting? Is it, what is this? You know, that I, I kind of, you were kind of a Jill of all trades, which is a great mm. um, trait to have with multi-passionate, multifaceted humans like I am too, but it can be also confusing, right? In a time of like, do I need to choose one thing? versus this array of skills that I have. And I know you had to go through a lot of like beta testing and working with some real humans in the beta test journey that we did together in nine day mm -hmm. launch. Like, I'm curious to hear, like, as you went through the testing journey, the validation journey of working with people, tweaking things, changing things, like how was that process of validation and testing with the real humans valuable to you then landing on a positioning of your work that felt more confident for you yeah I, the beta testing was invaluable I think in so many ways the biggest thing I took out of it was um I think confidence at the end of it it made me go it was me going oh I can do this maybe I can do this was the end of it because you've kind of up till that point I thought and my business also it has changed even quite a lot since oh, last really? year when I still was putting the bricks together so to speak but it it was that first it felt like that first real step for me going oh maybe this is a real thing and from the back of that I got my first paid client which um was a big win from it because it, I think a lot of that came from me going oh I can do this thing even if I haven't got the fancy website and I haven't got like a backlog of clients and a fancy lead magnet I didn't have any of that stuff yet but it gave me the confidence and it validated my idea which was another massive part of it. So I think it was those two elements. And also it just gets you used to putting yourself out there. I was posting on Facebook groups. I was finding those, um, my local communities or watering holes as you've called them, that I was a part of and realized that, oh, I have these connections and things. I can reach out to people. And it it kind of take took the curtain away a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay. And people responded and were like, yeah, I'm interested in this. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's just that little confidence boost. And I find now because you still have those those dips. I mean, believe me, they don't go away, which is also something that I, I don't know why. <laughs> this is a bit of a tangent. I don't know why I thought when I launched like officially earlier this year that all of that would go. It doesn't. And you, you're you still I'm still changing it, it, things a little bit now. But when when I have those like mini confidence dips now, I think back to then and go, oh, I, I knew even less than I do now. And I managed to make connections and work with people and get great testimonials out of it. So it's such an integral part. It just, it's the kind of cornerstone, I think, before you actually launch. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, so true that like confidence isn't something that just happens to you, right? It, it happens through experience. <laughs> Sounds so simple, but we do sometimes avoid that experience because we want to feel like when we do talk about our work, it's a moment where we're like, oh my God, I'm the expert in all of the things. And then I'm allowed to talk about it. But I think with your story, you know, what I've witnessed, which is so incredible to see is that 
you knew that, you know, we talked about the, even the word expert, right? It's a daunting word. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, to you repeatedly too, it's like, just think of yourself as a grade two person going through, you know, that you've done grade one and you're just bringing someone through grade one to grade two, right? You don't need to know all the other grades. You just need to be one step ahead of someone else. And then that makes you capable and ready to help someone right behind you, right? And I think as you were, you know, looking for an audience to serve, you didn't really have to look too far because actually there were lots of social equity that you've built along the way with colleagues and networks and communities and even like people in the 9 Day Launch Academy, right? You were interviewing them, doing a lot of market research calls with them uh, to start, which were just your low-hanging fruit network. And I think we forget that a lot, that we have already built these communities around us that are actually willing to help us if we were to make that request and that call. Um, how easy was it for you to like start talking to people about this work or how did you approach it in such a way that even when you didn't weren't like 100% sure this is the thing you want to offer you know what were some of the things you did to make that conversation feel more easeful um when you started to get beta clients or or case study interviews like what sort of helped you to like make that call you know or talk to them so that you can get more information about what you're building Mm, I think so I think this is where I'm lucky because of my journalistic background and the fact that I love talking to people anyway and it's kind of what I was paid to do before so I kind of just approached it with that journalistic mindset anyway and was like great I'm gonna just like like treat it like a story so I was like researching places I, I, again I started first and foremost with like whatsapp groups with facebook groups that I was part of the 90 day launch community um, and kind of wrote like mini pictures to people and just sent those off and then just was quite systematic and just was like okay I'll check in if they haven't replied in a couple of days but um yeah I just kind of sent sent a few off sent them into the universe didn't really like overthink it too much and then yeah sure enough a few people did start to reply and just start building that rapport and I think just in a way it was a little bit easier I think than maybe at the beginning of this year because I was like I could I, like I'm brand new I'm figuring this out. like so it almost felt yeah not as not as there wasn't really pressure there because I was approaching it from that um beginner's mind market research perspective which by the way I still think is a really invaluable tool and we should keep keep doing yes. that and that's something again so that true. I'm thinking back to now as I'm starting to build my own community um but yeah having that beginner's mind reaching out to people just saying that I'm genuinely curious and seeing if they wanted to uh, what's what are their thoughts getting their feedback and then if they wanted to go deeper and not just give me feedback um did they want to work with me um and I created like a type form I think it, not type form but like an online form I created an online form that people people could fill in uh just to get their gain their interest so I kind of started to just build from that and then I'm still using that kind of basis now I guess with my um, my mini brand audit on my website as a, a way to start building that community so that's kind of how it all started uh, really and there are people that yeah that I've worked with since who did the beta program but that I'm also and some that I'm still friends with now and still connect with and see how they're doing and that's really what it all is so just reframing it all is like your it's community building and that was again a big big help when I was um, yeah doing the beta process. I love that. It's that community building versus selling to people, right? It's actually, and also being honest that you, you know, you're here to be curious, to figure out what to build that would be valuable to others. And I think that's so much of a less pressure conversation than, hey, I know exactly what I'm doing and you should pay me immediately, right? So it's kind of doing it through a, in a collaborative way, right? To figure out what it is that people will invest in, what it is that, what pain points and desire points, right? That your offer should really be answering to, which I really, really love. Okay. So we talked about this beginning part of your journey of like, when we were in 90 Day Launch Academy together, it was building that business idea, testing it, finding a marketplace for it, figuring out the structure of your offer, validating it with a beta project, right? And that brought you to your first clients and even better, those particular beta clients became paid clients after the testing journey was done. So that landed you into that stage of, okay, I've got my first client, which is one of the biggest milestones. <laughs> and everyone remembers their yeah. first client. Yeah. It's a big win. It's a big like motivating factor to continue growing the business. Um, so that took you about, I think about a year, right? To kind of get to that point while working full-time. Um, and then we started talking again in your second phase of your growth journey, which is, okay, 
I've got my first few clients and now I want a model of working that feels like there's a routine. I understand how much money I should be making. Um, I know how to market and sell my offers, but also having some systems in my business so that things don't feel so ad hoc, right? Because in the beginning part of your journey, it's kind of like, ah, I just got to do this. And I do a little bit of that. And you do 50 things sometimes to figure out what's right. Um, and then now you kind of have a bit more clarity of like who you are, how you want to show up in your business, and you needed some systems to kind of put that together. So we started talking about Tiny Business Revolution, which is my mentorship program that I do one-on-one -on -one with people to help them go from scattered business to a model that is cozy, that is enough money, enough clients, enough work for the lifestyle choices they want. Um, when you were in this growth part of your journey, what were the next questions you needed answering for your business that you felt Tiny Business was supportive of you on? Gosh, so many things. I think just, just the organization part of it, because that all of that work I did before was just to get me to the starting line really and then I was like okay wow now I'm with the big boys like <laughs> I'm with all these actual real business owners and what what do I do to make sure that I'm kind of streamlining everything and I have the systems in place whether that's organizing clients sales um yeah finances was another big part of that yeah. um just so many so many parts of it um and just making sure that I had like a place to put them and know where everything was and not kind of like half in a google drive and half in like an email draft or on a in a notebook and and I think it's so so important to have those systems in place again from a confidence perspective when you're a new business owner because anything that can help you uh I guess accelerate wherever your business is supposed to be is going to be invaluable. And that's what the tiny business revolution allowed me to do and just kind of get the lay of the land. And if I ever now feel myself feeling a bit disorganized or feeling a bit ooh, like up here, I'm like, wait, hang on. Am I, is there a system? Maybe I should be. And the answer is always yes. Like it means I've probably, I'm not using a system and maybe I'm not being quite as organized as I could be with leads or, um, partnerships or collaborations there's a home that things like that should exist in and we should all be using um, as entrepreneurs yeah one of the motivations for me to have done a tiny business revolution was I realized actually even for my business in the last I've, I've had this business for 11 years you know there's always something that I can do better at in a sense of is it faster is it more efficient and is it even good use of my time Right. And so even being able to analyze and audit the activities you're doing in your business, is this actually fruitful for me or am I doing it based on I, everyone else is doing it? So I guess I have to jump on the bandwagon of this next trend or this next social media platform. And that can be overwhelming because, as you know, marketing is one of the biggest, you know, time energy like sucks in a business and not everybody wants to market in a way that's about the algorithms. Right. And so. I know that when we were working together, like part of what I think was really um, great to see you do was to look at every system in your business, like, you know, how you onboard a client to how you sell to a client or what are the stages of sales even that require different mm -hmm. touch points, different information, you know, for clients and how to make that streamlined and easier for you to communicate and connect and track those leads properly so that you're not working double time to get to leads constantly right and even look at your marketing system of like how do I make you know videos I'm doing and templates I'm doing um more streamlined so that when I do film a video I have my scripts I have my templates I have my content calendar you know and content bank ready for me right to go ahead and do those things so that all the the moving parts of a business doesn't feel so overwhelming um and if you were to kind of look back at like, because there are a lot of systems, you even were given a Notion, right, toolkit uh, to run your entire business through my system of Notion. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think has been like the biggest thing to streamline your time and energy so far? I know you're still, obviously, you've just graduated yeah. technically from mm -hmm. the Tiny Business Revolution program. But if you were to kind of look back like, oh, that really made a difference in how I show up yeah. for my business every day while I'm still working full time. What were some of the game changing systems or tools yeah. or strategy that helped you the most? 
Yeah, totally. So I think for me, I mean, all of it is is very important. And I think you take any one part of that out and your business will suffer because it's an integral part of it. Uh, but the say, I think the sales leads, I think that tra leads tracker, really, really important because they're the people that you're speaking to on a daily or, or weekly basis, whether it's even if it's just an acquaintance or somebody that you've met recently, that's kind of they might know somebody who knows somebody just making sure you're kind of you know who you've been speaking to you know how they relate to your business uh and and kind of relevant to that is also the partnerships tracker as well and some one of the biggest takeaways that I've ex learned this year partly from the program but also just from going out there and doing stuff is how important like networking and community is which is just it's like the bedrock of it so being able to have a space where you can actually track okay and when you spoke to them and when maybe they are free or just kind of seeing are they are they a warm lead maybe they're not ready just now but maybe they will be in the future having databases that streamline and organize all of that and in conjunction with that um like invitation emails if somebody is ready having a space for those emails so that you're not having to kind of start from scratch to write all of those emails you've got you've got space for that and um, it just makes the process of building those relationships just so much easier and you don't forget either because there might be somebody that maybe you spoke to two weeks ago I actually did this and was like oh Jane I, I need to email Jane because it was on this date and it's it sounds really really simple but just something as straightforward as that having places for your partnerships and your sales tracking um so important and similarly with the like the numbers and figuring out how much you actually need to be earning yeah. there's, a, there's a space for that too you know let's not forget the money side of things and all of this totally yeah I totally agree that like the the money sometimes is in the community right people may not buy right away but they remember you when you leave a good impression and I think part of having a good system to follow up to do, you know, you and I really love um, video, for example. So we do a lot more Loom videos. We do a lot more sort of voicemails, right? To people rather than uh, emails all the time. And that can change how people connect with you because they're actually like knowing there's a real human behind this business. I'm not on an automated thing where I'm just nothing but a number. And I think that really makes a difference in having intimacy and building this boutique brand, right? That is different from, uh, you know, sometimes these big blockbuster brands that get lost, you know, the audience gets lost in the mix because they're so busy and quite big to manage, right? Uh, and when you have a small audience, I think this is the time to start those rituals so that it becomes sort of second nature in how we totally. take care of those people right in our yeah business. totally it's really great yeah and that's that is part of building the brand and that's something that I'm passionate about as well it's that your community building the community is part of your brand and yeah. um the other thing I wanted to mention as well was yeah just breaking down the content funnel and just having a you can kind of almost see the steps and realize it because I'm still very much in the building brand aware like awareness so going hi oh, hey, everybody this is who I am and what I do, but then knowing what those logical steps are and where those people are on that journey, there's a space for that. So you know, okay, now maybe they are ready um, to be invited onto a discovery call or whatever, or sign up to the newsletter or whatever that whatever it is. You can you can track and see um, where people are. I love that. So if you were to kind of go back in time and talk to the the Becca from like year one right? Which is like two years, almost two years ago of this like beginning journey and what she was going through and knowing what you know today <laughs> in all the different parts of your journey that you've gone through, what would be like the most valuable thing that you would love for her to know um, that would help her to feel good about pursuing that meaningful business she's been dreaming of? Oh, I think trust yourself like have trust or have faith it, that it is going to happen as long as you just keep putting in the work it will you will get there just trust the process I think yeah trust the process it will it will work out eventually and I still say that to myself now you know because it, yeah. it is an ongoing process and there's still lots that I'm kind of tweaking with and changing now even um you know over a year later but I think just trust the process and know that if you put in the effort you will get to where you want to go. Beautiful. Okay, I would love people to check out your work because you have done such wonderful things for like, even for me, I learned so much from you when we talked together as well and having your 
expertise, your wisdom, and really your heart, because I find that you are such a genuine, authentic person to when it comes to things like marketing, mm -hmm. when, you know, lots of people talk about marketing out there and they don't always connect the act of marketing to the act of also like being human and authentic and genuine to who they are as people behind the marketing tactic. Um, that's why I really want people to check out your work for anyone who wants to learn how to market and sell in a way that feels human, that feels good to them and really understand what their special sauce is when it comes to marketing. Um, people need to, to do some of your resources. So I wanna be able to kind of connect people to you. What's sort of the best way uh, for people to find out what you do, maybe a resource that's a good kickstart thing they should start doing right away. Where can people find you? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple of places. So my website um, is consciouscommunicationschool.com. And on there, you will find my mini brand audit, which will kind of help you figure out where you are in understanding your brand and maybe areas of it that you can work on better, whether that's your brand values or your, your story or your target audience. So check out that at consciouscommunicationschool.com. Uh, you can also find me on, my two main platforms are LinkedIn and Instagram. So on Instagram, it's uh, at uh, Becky Conscious. And my LinkedIn, I think it's it's Rebecca Collins. So if you just type that in, it should come up or, or the page, the Conscious Communication School. But yeah, um, it would be great to connect with anybody else who does need a hand with their, their branding and just getting to know themselves and their their own brand and their business better because I firmly believe if you if you know yourself better it's so much easier to connect with your with your audience uh, and tell them what it is that you actually are passionate about and help you stand out I'll put all the links as well um, in the show notes whether you're watching this on YouTube or on the landing page on my website all the links to Becca's work and her channels will be there um, I definitely want to like tell people to check out your Instagram because I think what you do from the quiz, because I took the quiz as well and I came out as one of the profile types. And mm -hmm. what I loved of what you did in your Instagram channel is interviewing the business owners that represent that type of profile um, and actually just letting people see <laughs> what that kind of person looks like when they live out those values in their marketing and how they sell, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I know that on your website, there's sort of great tools to kind of audit your brand and make sure that you are not trying to be someone else when you position yourself in the marketplace. And I think that's the one imprint that you have to be a differentiating factor, you know, from other people that do what you do is to, to stand by something that no one can replicate, which is your story and the way you tell yes. it. Um, which is going to be the number one way of how people find you. I know how you and I found each other was through that as well, yeah. right? When you were looking for a coach, for sure. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's so, so many stories. So important. it's everything. And even with AI around, the, it's not even around the corner. It's yeah. here. The one mm -hmm. thing that AI can never take away from you is your story and your your passion and your purpose. So I think the more that we can lean into that, um, the the better your business will be for it. Perfect. Okay, well, I hope you get to connect with Rebecca and find out more what, about what she does. And she loves getting the personal messages. She's like me, where she reads all the messages, she replies back to all of them personally. Yeah. Um, and I, I know she would love to hear from you. So to check her out, check out the links on the resource page and uh, connect with her further. And hopefully you get a chance to work with Rebecca because she is absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with me, breaking down the journey with me. I've been such a proud mama bear coach seeing you <laughs> grow in the last couple of years. And I can't wait to see all the wonderful things that you do in your business in the upcoming time. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yes, certainly. It's just the start, really, isn't it? Yeah, I can't wait to see more. <laughs>